Tori puts his finger to the trigger, and they try maximum velocity. Oh. That was a direct hit. Yeah, we're still not getting the flip. I think we need to get some more energy punching down on the car. This time, the back wheels did at least get off the ground, but only by two degrees. And they'll need 90 for a flip, so there's a long way to go yet. But will upping the ante on the impact make a difference? What do you got up there, Byron? I've got a little over 100% of the weight of the car just slamming down on the hood. So that's a whole nother car. Yeah, this should be good. All right. The fist may look small, but at 100% the weight of the car, it should pack a powerful punch. Oh, oh, that was a direct hit. Yeah, I saw the body flex, but still no flip. More mass gets them a four degree elevation, but this myth is going nowhere fast, so they go for broke. Now, I thought that that weight was kind of crazy, but I do have another weight. I could make this three times the weight of the car. Yeah, that sounds good. Totally. Going for full tilt, they're dropping three times the weight of the car. Oh. But instead of a tilt, the weight grinds the car to a halt. So for the next test, they try 200%. Okay, this might be the magic punch. Good shot. Whoa. No flip. That nets them the highest rear wheel elevation so far of 15 degrees. But they're two parameters down and still miles off a flip. Will tweaking the final variable cause a tumble? If the mass is down low and far away from the pivot point, it's harder to flip. If you move the mass up away from the pivot point, suddenly it becomes easier to flip the car over. So we're gonna put some luggage on the top here and see if that helps us out. It's a tiny SUV capping holiday with 25% of the car's weight in luggage. All right, so this is it, the final parameters for our final test and everything is in our favor. But I mean, so far after all these tests that we have done, I think this is asking a lot. In other words, it's now or never. And it's never. Raising the center of gravity did increase the tilt to 25 degrees, but that's nowhere near enough. Even with the combination of the optimal variables, they're no closer to a flip, which means this is busted. I'm pretty sure cars weren't meant to flip end over end over end. So even a big giant punch from a superhuman from hell, I don't think is going to do it. So why is it that no combination of these variables seems to be making any difference with our results? Well, it all comes down to physics. See, we are applying our force too close to the fulcrum. Imagine that it's like a seesaw with a large weight on one side and you apply weight on the other side, but here's the kicker, almost on top of the fulcrum. Now, the force that you need to apply to get the weight to lift from here is almost astronomical. But the problem is, if you apply too much force, the lever will break. The flippin' physics are busting the myth, but that's never stopped the Mythbusters before. Now, we know that this myth is down to levers, but replicating the movie and dropping the weight on the hood just isn't causing the car to flip. The force is applied too close to the fulcrum, but what if we create a lever? We increase the distance of the weight to the fulcrum. That way, when we drop the weight, the vehicle should flip end over end. I mean, should work like a charm. That's right, science fans. Instead of Hollywood fakery, Tori's devilish idea is to flip this car using physics. In three, two, one. Oh! Grant, that looked like a flip to me. I mean, it didn't do it exactly like the movie, but. Dude, I think we can move on from there. This might work. It was going. The lever scored a tilt on the car of over 90 degrees, and it's clear that the physics are working. So after a small-scale proof, it's time to ramp this up and put a massive lever on the SUV's roof. Oh, yeah. Should be good. Now, this thing is beefy. It's got to be strong, because we're going to be dropping 5,000 pounds on the front end of it. If anything's going to make it flip, it's this design. But it's one thing to do it in small scale and another to do it in large scale. It's quite the engineering challenge, but with 1,100 pounds of steel welded into a giant lever, they're ready to put it to the test. <laughs> they old add a huge lever to the front end of a vehicle and drop a giant weight on it to get the car to flip. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've seen that trick once, I've seen it a thousand times. <laughs> the best case scenario here is that we hit the lever perfectly with our 5,000 pound weight, the car tips right at the tipping point, boom, crashes upside down. I think the worst case scenario here, none of us really want to imagine. Our timing's off, we might hit the weight, smash the car and have to revisit. There's a lot riding on this car, and it's not just the weight of the lever. There's only one car, and they've only got one shot to get this right. For once, failure is not an option. And we have done everything to engineer it in our favor. I think if that weight hits the front end of this vehicle, we're going to see this thing flip. <sighs> I'm a little excited. I'm a little nervous. There's so much that can go wrong on this. I'm anxious. <sighs> Let's do it. OK, this is car somersault, lever car. All right, final experiment in three, two, one, go. It's now or never as the lever car is towed towards its destiny, either to be crushed by 5,000 pounds or to be finally flipped by physics. Still in the channel. Looks like it's going straight. It does look like it's going looks straight. Looks like it's going All straight. All right. All right. This is it. This is it. <laughs> Bingo, everything went exactly to plan. The weight triggering at the right moment, dropping onto the very front of the lever and tilting the car. But it was still only a 45 degree dangle. And of course, there was no flip. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh my gosh, the stars had to Dude, align. Look, it dug into the ground here. And did you see how high the back end got? I mean, it almost went over. But the important thing here is that it didn't. So we tested this myth, just like in the movie, yet we couldn't get the car to flip. Then we moved on to the ridiculous. We changed the design of the car. We increased the force of the punch. However, we still were not able to get the car to flip. I really wish it had, but it didn't. So this myth is busted. Now you know how the saying goes, give me a big enough lever and I can move the world. And that may be true, provided you have a few things. One, your lever arm is strong enough. Two, your fulcrum holds up. And three, you apply enough force. Now in our case, it's our fulcrum that failed because our wheels and suspension crushed, absorbing a lot of the energy. Let's try a bigger car. Let's try a bigger lever. Let's try a semi. <laughs> 